The first member of Gen Z has been elected to Congress. At only 25 years old, Congressman-elect Maxwell Alejandro Frost will represent Florida's 10th district. Frost first appeared on The Sunday Show last year to discuss his run highlighting the importance of gun violence prevention. As he prepares to take office in January, his celebration began with a shout-out from President Biden. I was pleased to call Maxwell Frost, a 25-year-old who got elected, I guess the youngest man ever elected to the United States Congress. But I have no doubt he's off to an incredible start and what I'm sure will be a long, distinguished career. Earlier this morning, I spoke with Florida's new congressman-elect. Congressman-elect Maxwell Alejandro Frost. Welcome back to The Sunday Show. Of course. Thank you for having me. How does it feel to hear that <laughs> congressman-elect? I know. I mean, it's completely surreal. I feel incredibly blessed, humbled. I mean, I remember the election night watch party. We had hundreds of our supporters around us, and really, that's what I'm taking with me, just thinking of all those faces, everyone who really put a lot on the line uh, to make sure that we won this. So you are part of what I call the, the Parkland generation. Mm. And when I heard you were running for Congress, I said, let's get him on, te let's get him on television. Yep. Let's hear what he has to say. Um, and I'm just going to claim credit. We were the first ones to put you <laughs> on national television. And you impressed all of us. And we kept inviting you back. Um, talk to us about... The, the campaign, yeah. what it was like now that it's you've run the race, you've won the race, yeah. the experience. Well, you know, we launched August 11th of last year. So we've been doing this for over a year and a half um, or, or about a year and a half. It's been very difficult. There were a lot of trying times, a lot of hard decisions. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said before, it was really about the team that we built. I mean, it was my name on the ballot, but it was really a whole movement of people in Central Florida and really across the country that came together to make it happen. Um, I'm happy Election Day is come and gone. <laughs> Um, and really excited to represent my community in Congress. How does it feel to make history? You're the first Gen Z um, to be elected to Congress. You know, I didn't run to be the first Gen Z member of Congress. I, you know, obviously ran to represent my district, but it's an incredibly important part of the story, right? Like Gen Z and millennials make up a third of this country. We're nowhere near a third of this country's government, uh, both locally and nationally, and think we need to change that. You had a conversation with President Biden after your election win. What did he say to you? Well, the first thing he told me was that he was elected when he was 29 to the Senate and that he had to wait for his birthday uh, to be uh, sat and to be sworn in. <laughs> so he asked me if I have to wait for a birthday. I told him, no, Mr. President, you have me beat on that. Like, I'm already 25. I can be sat immediately, uh, but obviously waiting for January 3rd. You know, you tweeted um, that there needs to be continued organizing with young voters yeah. and discussion on important issues to keep this trend moving in the right direction. Uh, despite Florida's red wave in this election, because if there was a wa red wave in this country, it was Florida. in Florida. Do you see a generational shift in the future? I do. I do. And we saw that, you know, Gen Z, younger millennials voted for Democrats. I think it was about 63, 64 percent. I think we're going to continue to see that number rise because we're voting for the party that's fighting for a livable world. We're voting for the party that's fighting to end gun violence. We're voting for the party that's fighting to make sure that everyone has health care. And what we're going to see is, number one, Gen Z, half of us aren't even old enough to vote yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, the youngest Gen Z is like 13 years old. So this is really exciting to me. And I just want to make sure as Democrats that we're continuing to put forth bold solutions, things like canceling student debt, things like ensuring we're combating the climate crisis, to make sure that we excite that base, tell them that we're looking forward to working for future generations, and organize you year round with young people. So when it's election time, we don't have to convince them to vote. We just have to remind them. So I'm writing this down. You said student debt, climate. What yeah. other issues do you want to work on now that you're going to be in Congress? Yeah, definitely student debt and the, and the climate crisis. I'll also say ending gun violence. You know, I'm a survivor right, of, of gun course. violence. It's very important to me. I got involved in this fight 10 years ago because of the Sandy Hook shooting. Um, and so for me, I mean, we live in a country where the leading cause of death for children is guns. Um, and that's unacceptable. So that's something we have to work to end. The other thing is the economy. Um, and this is kind of you know, a broad thing, right? Mm -hmm. I, I want to make sure that everybody in this country, one of the richest countries on the face of the earth, have their basic necessities met, have health care, have a decent wage, have a union representing them, have more power both in the workplace and as consumers. And I think that really is the key to solving a lot of our issues. Uh, what committees do you want to be on? Have you even focused on that yet? A little bit. You know, I, I want to be wherever I can really serve my constituents. So looking forward to see where that is. But, uh, you know, I have a lot of different interests on it. Um, I just want to note that you said you got involved in the gun violence issue with, uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. You were 15. Mm -hmm. 
Um, when you were 15 and you got involved, was this even in the cards? Running for office? Running for office. No, not at all. Not at all. I was really just, I wanted to be an organizer. I just wanted to bring people together. I wanted to use arts and culture and music and everything I loved to make a difference. Um, and you know what's funny about that? Someone tweeted at me a few weeks ago saying, he said he got involved 10 years ago. He was 15. We live in a country where, yeah, 15-year-olds are getting involved because we don't want to get shot at school. And that's a shame. Um, and so there's just a lot of work we have to do. Um, you're Afro-Latino. Yeah. How important is it to you, or has it hit you yet, mm -hmm. who you've become now to other Afro-Latino yeah. kids? Yeah. I mean, we know there are so many black Latinos out there, and I, I love being a black Latino because I have the opportunity to really understand a lot about the different culture, especially in Central Florida, that we have growing Latino population, growing population of black folks. Um, and what I always say, as far as being a Latino is concerned, is, you know, it's all about familia, bringing people together. I remember driving down to Hialeah um, to really spend time with my family, and everyone was eating, and everyone was dancing, and everyone was very joyful. And I want we should take that and put it in our politics, right, um, and, and have a politics that's about everybody and everything and everyone. Y'all see why he was elected? <laughs> Congressman-elect Maxwell Alejandro Frost, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for coming back to the Sunday show. Of course, I appreciate it.